In this lesson, we're going to create our first prop using box modeling methods without smoothing. All right, so we've created our layout here, and I just want to go ahead and get just a rough shape for our box. So I'm going to create a box in our scene. Okay, and we'll go something pretty rough here. So let's go ahead and do uh, one on our length, and let's do actually let's go ahead and go to point eight. Let's do 1.4 on our width, and then on our height, we're going to go ahead and do 1. All right, so let's go ahead and push this up against the wall, and I'm just modeling this in place just to kind of get an idea of the proportions and of our scale. And you'll notice that we have the shadow poking through. Let's go ahead and switch this to shaded, so that way we don't have any of those odd uh, shading artifacts in the way. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and convert this to Edible Poly. And we're going to create kind of a vent for this. So inside of Edible Poly, let's go ahead and expand our selection. And we're going to go to Edge Mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to chamfer this edge to create kind of a bevel along this corner. So if I go to Edit Edges Rollout and I use Chamfer using the settings, I can expand my amount here. Okay, and that will give me kind of this beveled edge. All right, so I'm going to go to something like 0.4. All right, so by doing that, you'll notice that using chamfer, sometimes it will create triangles or n-gons. And as you can see here, this is an n-gon. Now, one thing to remember is whenever you are creating items like props for sets and things like that, if they are not going to deform, n-gons are usually okay. Now, I like to keep my topology nice and clean, so if I can help it, I would go ahead and uh, convert them over to quads anyway. It's just a personal preference of mine. All right, so now that I have this, let's go ahead and start talking about uh, getting the shapes that we want out of this object. So what I want to do is I want to round off these corners. So I'm going to do this by simply selecting this loop right in here, and I'm going to do the same thing here as well. Okay. And let's actually let's just do these sides. Let's not count uh, this edge right in here. I'm going to hit J to turn off that bounding box. Sometimes that gets in the way. Let's go ahead and use chamfer and if we take our amount down you'll see that it begins to soften those edges. So I'm going to go to point one on this and then I'm going to add some segments in there and you'll see how that starts to round out that chamfer. So this is really uh, the method that we would use for rounding off edges without using a smoothing method like Turbo Smooth or NERMS. All right, so now that we have this, uh, let's go ahead and create kind of the vent that we'll see along the bottom. So I'm going to go to Polygon Mode and select this one polygon, and then I'm going to use Inset. Now Inset is going to create a, a polygon on, or I'm sorry, inside of the polygon that you had selected. So if I extrude the amount, or take the amount up, you'll see that it gives us a little bit of a rim there. So I'm going to go to point zero four and hit OK. Now with this polygon here, I'm going to go ahead and extrude that up into the vent. So let's go to negative point one and then we'll hit OK. Now I need to create some sort of grate that is going to cover this vent. So I'm going to extract this geometry out of here to create that. So I'm going to hold down Shift, and I'm going to pull that down. And while holding Shift, once I release that, it's going to say clone part of mesh. I can make this part of it, this object, or I can clone and make it its own object. Let's go ahead and make it part of this element and just hit OK. So now that we've done this, let's go ahead and go into um, edge mode here, or I'm sorry, vertex mode, and actually let's go to element mode, and I'm going to pull this down so that way I can see it a little bit better, and then I'm going to right click, and I'm going to cut these edges here. So I'm going to cut from here down to here, and then I'm going to cut from here down to here, okay, and then I'm going to cut from this vertex all the way across to this one. So you can kind of see how I've cut this apart to where this end gone is now full of quads here. And this is just going to be make it a little bit easier on me whenever I'm trying to create 
the actual grates because I'm going to select all of these edges here and I'm going to use connect and what connect will do is take those set of edges that we had selected and create segments across those so if I go to something like 12 here and then I hit OK and then I go ahead and select this edge hold shift and select the next edge in line that will create or select that ring and then I can use connect and drop down those settings and create this kind of checker pattern across this object now all I have to do is go to polygon mode and select all of those polygons in that and then I can use inset and create the, the holes for this grate now you'll notice that it's creating one solid polygon what I wanted to do is I wanted to create polygons on the inside of each one of those individual polygons so if I go from group to by polygon you'll see how that switches so if I draw this down you'll see that this gives us a polygon on the inside of each one of those and we can see that this geometry that is being created is creating kind of this grate so I'm going to type in 0 .01 and then hit OK let's extrude this upward and let's do 0 .01 and actually let's do negative 0 .05 and then I'll hit OK. Let's hit delete and then all I have to do at this point is just move that that grate, let's select the element, is select that grate and then push it back up into the vent. Okay, And there we go. So now if I go out of element mode I can move this object individually and move the grate along with it. Now let's create the inset on the sides. So I'm going to select these two polygons on each side and we're going to use inset. Let's take that amount up and give ourselves a little bit of a rim here. So I'm going to go to 0 .05 and hit OK. Let's extrude that and it's going to be in a negative direction. And so negative 0 .05 is a good value and we'll hit OK on that. Alright, so now we've created that inset that we want to see and now I want to create some sort of element or detail across the front so if I go to edge mode I can select all of these edges right down the center of this object now one thing that I want you to notice let's hit alt Q just to um, isolate the vent one thing that you'll notice is if I hit ring it's not going all the way through now why is that well what's happening if we go ahead and we move this grate out of the way what's happening is we have this object or this polygon as an ingon and it doesn't know where to go from here so what I'll have to do is either select all of these po uh, edges here and then hold shift and select these edges okay, and select all of those all the way through or I could cut those vertices and create quads all the way around now I don't have to do that with this object so I'm just going to make sure that I select all of these edges by holding shift that selects that ring and then I'll hold control, select the next set of edges here in this ring, and then hold shift to select the next one. Okay, so that should select all the way around. Let's go to connect, and let's just do two. I'm going to hit OK on that, and then I'm going to go to polygon mode, and select just these two polygons. Let's extrude those out, and let's go in a positive direction, and that's going to create kind of this element that I'm looking for. Now I want to uh, type in a value here. I'm going to type in 0.15 and then I'm going to hit OK and I want to bevel this. So I'm going to grab my scale tool and bevel this in the X direction just to kind of round that out some. And then I want to go to edge mode, select this edge and just move it straight out in the Y to something like so. Let's go to our left view by hitting L on the keyboard and I'm going to raise that up to where this line across the bottom is pretty close to being flat. You don't have to be absolutely exact. Um, if you want you can go ahead and select all of these vertices along the bottom and you can use the make planar underneath your edit geometry. So here's make planar. So we want to make planar in the Y direction. So if we hit Y, or I'm sorry, the Z direction, that will bring all of those level in the Z direction. You can see that with the world axis here. Alright, so I've made that perfectly flat along the bottom. And now, what I want to do is I just want to go to edge mode and just kind of shape this up a little bit better. So I'm going to take, actually let's go to polygon mode, and let's take this and let's just pull that back into there a little bit. 
and then I'm going to grab this polygon right here and I'm just simply going to inset that to create a rim and then I'm going to extrude that in a negative direction to push that back up into my object okay so let's do negative 0.15 and then hit OK let's grab this element and we're going to push that back up into our vent and then I'm going to change its color to black and then give it a gray material just to make it a little bit easier to look at alright so we've created our vent using box modeling methods and we've smoothed out some of these corners now it would be a good idea to come in here and continue to smooth some of these corners here so if you double click on these edges and select these loops you can come in and chamfer those and that will smooth out those edges so this kinda gives us a little bit of a highlight so if we draw this in really tight here to something like 0 0.15 we can hit OK and that gives us a nice round edge now remember on non-deforming objects it's okay to have these end gons it's not that big of a deal All right. now if you come around and you select this loop here like right across the top and you come in and you want to chamfer that to soften that you can do so but pay attention to what it creates you'll see here this has created kind of an odd uh, looking bit of geometry so we might want to take care of that somehow so let's target weld some of these pieces together so I'm going to target weld from here to here and across and then down and then all I have to do is select these vertices here and hit control backspace to get rid of those okay now you'll see that this has created ingons across here but that's okay remember it's not that big of a deal but we do want to kind of deal with things like this so I'm going to draw this down okay and then uh, let's pull this one across and then I'll select these two control backspace to remove those now we're not deleting we're removing those alright great so now we've rounded those off and we can come in and we can continue to round out some of these other edges usually whenever you are chamfering you want to select the entire loop most of the time okay so chamfer and we'll do one edge there on each side that rounds that out very very nicely we can come across to this entire loop here we could do the same thing all the way around this object so I'm just holding down control and double clicking and then we'll use chamfer to round that out let's do one single edge here just to give it a little bit of a crease okay and then go into vertex mode and clean up any areas that may need it so target well this isn't going to hurt anything so I'm just going to just kind of chamfer that I'm going to take this edge and pull that back forward a little bit and this way kind of at a diagonal direction and you can do the same thing on this side so target weld get rid of that and then down to there push that over in the X that kind of relieves that a little bit okay alright now this is a non smoothing method okay we're not worried about n-gons or anything like that we are placing the polygons exactly where we want them and we don't have to worry about uh, smoothing now whenever we get into smoothing methods we do need to worry a little bit more about n-gons and how they affect our workflow so we're going to talk about how to do that next